hello and i apologize for the horrible angle here uh the only quiet space i could find was in the car and um, i just wanted to share with you a little bit about my story today um of child to parent abuse um first of all i never ever thought that uh i would be doing this uh certainly it never even crossed my mind um you know, as, as probably most people, I adopted two boys from foster care as a single mom, my younger son. He came to me at 18 months old. I was in June, um, from DCF at three o'clock in the morning as an emergency hotline placement. And his adoption was not finalized until 2016 when he was almost four. Um, now I'll kind of walk you through some milestones if you will um he was an adorable adorable little kid like oh my gosh charm the pants off anybody he was so sweet um and his smile his smile would you know light up the room um the reason he came to me was because of neglect it was reported that uh he was crying constantly um for long periods of time until the neighbors called it in um therefore they brought him over to the hotline placement um, I kept him overnight, sent him back to DCF in the morning because I had to go work. They begged me to take him for the weekend. So I did. Um, and that was the longest weekend of my life. Um, <laughs> no one else really was open to, to take him as the story goes. Um, but anyways, um, I don't know the extent of substances that his mom used because we generally adoptive parents aren't given those details. Um, which is another thing entirely. Uh, I am told, however, that he was breastfed with um, heroin in his mom's system and that she smoked during the pregnancy. Um, he had no consistent caregiver and he was often shuffled around to other relatives. He was then um, re-traumatized after a failed attempt at reunification with his mom in a rehab facility. Um, DCF thought that it would be good for him to go stay with her. This was December, right before Christmas. So I had had him for six months, five and a half, whatever. It was almost his second birthday in January. And um, so I, I sent him all his Christmas gifts, all his stuff. Um, he had started uh, talking words. He had started, you know, um, just, you know, growing in little ways. Um Unfortunately, she started using in the program and uh, got scared. And um, from what I am told, um, she locked him or left him alone in her program room while she escaped through the window. Um, I don't know how long he was there. I don't know how long he was alone. I don't know what he was doing. Um, those thoughts can really bother me. Um, but anyways, DCF called me week um first week of new year's of january and said would i take him back and me thinking oh my gosh that that would be the least disruption for him at least he knows us um i was like sure absolutely so we took him back but ultimately that was not the best thing to do um because in his eyes i had been the one to betray him and took him away from his mom again um uh, that's just how kids process it um therefore you know i became the nurturing enemy as i'm sure most of you have heard that term uh from that point forward he was very hard to bond with um emotionally he could care less if i was the one you know to put him in bed to be there he'd go with anybody anybody's house strangers um no stranger danger um he'd go you know to the guy at walmart's house if i let him um, I was so scared he was going to get kidnapped and taken someday. Um, but when he came back, his, his eyes were just kind of vacant and unresponding. He would sit by the door and scream, ma, ah! and just look at me with this face. Like he was so mad at me. And I, I honestly, I do believe that was the straw that broke the camel's back for him. Uh, I, I really think that's what, you know, kind of sealed the deal for uh, his trauma. Um, because it was so severe. And um, I also heard that um, he had been sleeping in the bed with her mom at the program, um, which was not supposed to be allowed. But again, even more bonding for a child to be broken. 
Um, so he was supposed to be a short-term placement, but we all know how that goes. Um, so he stayed with me. I had an older son that uh, was foster as well. He had his adoption wasn't finalized either. So it was me and the two boys. Um, I worked full time, you know, um, got home. They were in before school, after school, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, at two years old, um, my son was um, kicked out of his first daycare due to aggression. Um, wonderful daycare. My older son went there for years and she just, you know, it just wasn't fair to the other kids. Um, from the ages of two to four, he received 75 disciplinary write-ups at his new daycare. And he went through a dozen therapists, um, at, and they were, they were good. Um, they just had a high turnover rate. Um, so it didn't, it wasn't really effective, uh, for his treatment. Um, he had multiple sets of ear tubes placed, and at one point he had 90% hearing loss because of fluid buildup. He had daily nebulizer treatments, and he was always sick, bronchitis, pneumonia, lungs, lungs, um, RSV, you name it. He was my sickly one. Um, he also had scabs um, on him, his ears and his arms from self-picking. Um, I, I didn't tune into it then, but I should have known that that was a sign of anxiety even for little kids uh at four to five years old he had his first neuropsych evaluation done at my request i suspected certain things um but instead he was diagnosed with other things uh a few other things <clears throat> and some learning difficulties he was put on an iep in an integrated preschool he did okay at the preschool ups and downs you know um getting in trouble, this and that. Um, at six to seven, he had many teacher reports of odd behavior, repeated shouted words, bullying others. He would just taunt kids mercilessly until they cried. Um, I, I didn't, I don't get it. Like he wanted friends so bad, uh, but he would just push them away because he would, tease and obsess until they just wanted to get him away. He had his second neuropsych done um, and he was diagnosed with a couple of other things. Still not what I suspected, um, but it led us in, in a direction. We started on two different kinds of medication. When he just turned seven, um, COVID hit increasing his anxiety and adding to his behaviors at home, which had recently just started kicking up. I mean, like he, he had been, you know, I, I saw all these things at a, at a younger age and he was difficult at home. Um, but, uh, but nothing too bad. Um, but after COVID hit, his behaviors just steadily rose, um, increasing my need to find services. Uh, I'm just, you know, I was terrified. My, my little boy's, you know, going down the tubes here and, and I, I don't know how to help him. I had no idea where to start. I asked his primary care doctor. She really didn't have many answers. Directed me to, you know, places with long waiting lines. We all know, you know, the story, the mental health explosion and all of those things and not enough therapists, not enough, all of that. Um, but I was so lost that I didn't know where to start having a child like this. Um, so at eight, he was in the third grade. He got 27 disciplinary major referrals. Um, he was suspended three times. He drew a graphic book about how he wanted to stab his classmates in school. And he was aggressive towards teachers once in a sexual way. He threw sand in Peter's eyes he just wanted to get back. It was revenge for anyone he perceived had slighted him. He started stealing things, anything he could get at school, at home, valuable, not valuable, didn't matter. Um, it was daily pocket jacket, backpack checks. Um, <clears throat> he had another neuropsych evaluation at this point, and he was additionally diagnosed with a couple of other things. Um, it scored him... <clears throat> clinically significant on um, a couple of the uh, spectrums. He also has a language-based learning disability, including dyslexia and dysgraphia. We started him on other medications, 
and other medications and it's just one one led to another because the side effects just cancel you know um you never know what is really helping um at this point it was getting really crazy at our house um it was bad there was lots of violence property destruction uh daily he has broken probably everything in our house picture frames side tables uh, mirrors, TVs, you, kitchen chairs, you, you name it. Um, it, it just, it was what he would break that day. Who knew? Um, we slowly had to start hiding everything. We locked up our knives, lighters, push pins, paper clips, razors. Um, we couldn't even throw a disposable razor head in the trash because he would dig through the trash to get them. Um, and he wasn't doing self-harm. He just, I don't know. Like, you don't want your kid walking a razor. It was kind of creepy. Um, we had everything of value locked in safes, thermal controls, our wallets, money, um, jewelry of any kind. And finally, we had to give it a lock on my older son's door, um, so that he would sleep without fear. Um, the fear... <sighs> The fear is unlike anything because you love this child with all of your heart. You're his mom, and, but you're really scared to death. Like, I, I, I was okay thinking I could probably handle myself, like, if he went after me. But I was terrified for my other children. So, at this point, I had my older son was... Um, you know, uh, 12, I think 11, 12. And my, I had a biological daughter at this point and she was, you know, newborn one, two going through this. And I cannot, I can't put into words, honestly, how difficult it was to have to choose and mediate between my children. Um, it's absolutely the horrible, horrible feeling to have to pick which one you want to protect and save and talk him through it, but don't let her, it, it's really not meant to happen. Um, that's, that's the bottom line. Um, so my son got a lock so that he could sleep. Um, I got him a therapy pet. I thought, cool, let's, let's try this Avenue. Um, it was a baby bunny. Unfortunately, we had to rehome the bunny after about two months because my son would hurt it on purpose. I didn't believe it till I watched it, but he literally would pick it up and drop it. He stabbed it with push pins and he put sanitizer in its eye. It's I, the things I blew up, man. I, I couldn't find a vet. <laughs> Where do you take this? Um, so we rehomed the bunny is fine. He is in a wonderful barn. Um, my son has um, probably, I was too scared to go to the hospital and tell them that my son had done it. So I did not. But my son has probably <laughs> fractured my wrist. Um, by throwing something at it. Um, he has grabbed the pizza cutter. And come after us. Um, kicking, spitting, hitting. On the daily. Breaking everything. He stabbed his brother with a pencil. Um, verbally abusive. Just just awful things. Like not only swears. I mean but it's, it's like, um, you know, nobody loves you. Nobody cares about your stupid idiot, like just constant barrage. And it was primarily myself. Uh, and if I wasn't there, it was my older son that took the brunt and my older son just got quieter and quieter, um, because he couldn't stop it. And he didn't want to make things harder than they already were. Um, you know, and I think, I think a big, huge misconception and I could be wrong, but I felt it was your kid is doing this. Why aren't you, why are you letting him? Why, what, you know, what, what is your parenting like? Like, come on, does he get away with everything? And, and I really, really just want to point out, I, I swear, I swear to you, like it's, it's not, it's not a parenting issue. It is a mental health issue at its core. 
and it just presents this way. Um, we tried everything. I mean, the therapists had us all kind of charts, graphs, visual cues, audi auditory cues, um, routine, structure, consequences, no consequence, everything. I mean, we bent over backwards to try to make this work. Um, time away, special time, time apart, time together. It, uh, there's nothing else that I could do, honestly. Um, I, I won't go too far on that rant. <laughs> But you feel like as a parent, you feel like there's something I should be able to do. It's my kid, like, who can't handle their kid. But there comes a point sometimes where you can't. And I think it's very uh, humbling um, in a way. Um, anyways, at age 10, uh, my son was put in a substantially separate classroom in the fourth grade. He was on seven different medications. He had an in-home therapist, in-home behavioral therapist, specialist, psychiatrist, outpatient therapy, an intensive care coordinator, family partner, a lawyer advocate, and you name it. I mean, we had every service under the sun I had managed to track down. Um, I have called, I, at that point, had called the police eight times to my house multiple ER visits, overnight stays at the hospital, two CBAT stays for 15 days or so each, and an inpatient hospital stay for 10 days. Um, after that, we added more meds. Why, why not? You know, um, nothing else can help this kid and we need him to stay home because we don't have anywhere else to put him. So let's medicate. Um, I begged for two and a half years for a referral for an out-of-district for a therapeutic day school. He could, could not function at the public schools. And I begged and I rejected IEPs. And I told the school, my son is a liability. I mean, he's throwing desks, chairs, ripping cords out of the AC units. I mean, like he was going to hurt someone. And they, they didn't, they didn't listen. They, oh, he'll be, he'll be fine. I, I think he'll be okay here. I just blew my mind. Um, he started running away from school and then the cops had to be called. Um, we finally signed a contract for an out of district placement and <laughs> I, naive. I thought that I had won a small battle, you know, I was like, yes, he's going to get what he needs. And then we got denied from the therapeutic schools because his behavior was too intense. What, how, what, what? How does it even happen? I mean, that's what they're there for. Um, so it was crazy. It was crazy. And we couldn't, we had the approval. We couldn't get him anywhere. Um, I, I don't take no very easily, especially when it comes to my kids. Uh, I've met with the state um, representative. I have met with our superintendent twice. I've contacted PPAL, CPAC, JRI, DCF, RAD Advocates, MHAP, and MCPAP, Adoption Journeys, DMH, you know, I, you name it. And just anything I thought could. And, and it just, I think it was overwhelm of the system, you know, with, with uh, the mental health industry. But it was just crazy. Um, call them or call them, you know, bounce, bounce, bounce. So... It was con taking up my whole, I mean, I couldn't have held a job if I wanted to. It was, I was calls all day. I begged for a voluntary placement um, for my son when I found out that he was being aggressive towards my daughter. Um, she was one and a half and he had been grabbing her forcefully and, you know, I, not huge things yet. Um, but something kind of turned in me as a mom. And I said, I, I have to stop this. I can't do it. Um, I cannot, I will not allow her to get hurt. She is, you know, just the most vulnerable. Um, <clears throat> we, um, so I begged for the voluntary placement. Um, they told me, no, they told me to watch him better. Um, 
So <laughs> there's that. We got in-home cameras to protect ourselves. We've had three 51As filed on myself, my husband, and my son himself. Uh, based on what my son has told people about us. Um, I was very concerned for my daughter's safety as well as my other son's. He basically held us hostage in our home. We, we couldn't go out. We could, I couldn't watch all three um, alone. We couldn't go anywhere. Some Someone would be hurt in the process. Um, we were homebound. Our village shrunk. I couldn't leave him with anyone um, except maybe one or two people. And, you know, it was, what is he going to do there? Um, it was... <clears throat> It was a really, really um, bad place to be. I was becoming very depressed, um, hopeless, honestly, just stinking hopeless. I had, you know, I had tried everything and we still had this child. What do we do with? Um, so um, we had nowhere else. I had nowhere else to turn. Um, and so I did the thing that everyone cautioned me against and everyone told me not to do that. It would end up very badly, but I went to the court and I filed a, uh, CRA, a child requiring assistance in my state at the juvenile court. Um, I was, I don't think I've ever been that terrified. I had to stink and walk down to probation and file this on my own child. It was it was awful and not knowing what they would do. Um, turns out we had our first court date. They issued an immediate out of home order and um, they gave physical custody to the department of children and families so that they could place him somewhere out of the home. Um, he was placed in a horrible facility for 45 days. Then he was placed back at another CBAT, which turned into a residential placement. Um, he is now 11, and he still resides at the RTF. He is doing better, and we are weaning him off some of the meds. He does display the same behaviors there that he did at home. Um, he's broken the unit's TV, <laughs> you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> but... I can't, um, I, the wave, the process of this has just been incredible roller coaster, you know? I mean, um, it literally broke my heart to send him away. I swore I never would, um, but I had to for my other two kids. Um, my daughter still has um, a severe startle reflex. She can't handle loud noises. Um my son has extreme anxiety, um, insomnia, um, you know, it's, uh, self, <clears throat> um, self-confidence issues, my older son. Um, I, uh, and we've all been in therapy since he's, um, uh, been gone. I have, um, I'm in the process of being diagnosed with, um, with PTSD, um, secondary, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, my memory is shot. Uh, you know, I get startled so easy. Everything makes my heart rate go up. Um, even a trip to the store, if there's a lot of people, um, I just, I, I have to leave. I have to go. Um, and it's, it's, it's just so hard, um, to see what it's done to our family. I feel like, you know, I, f I feel like we'll be okay. Like, we'll, we'll I think we're going to make it through this, you know, um, in one piece. Uh, and, and I don't know if he'll be reunified in the home or not. Um, that's, you know, TBD <laughs> to be determined. Um, but I really feel like awareness needs to be brought to this issue because we were real people real parents loved our children that were really, really stuck in a very bad, dangerous place. Um, <clears throat> it was, you know, I, I don't, 
I don't like to go there, but it was very easily could have gone to where all of our children were removed uh, based on what they, my son had said. And it, it just would have, you know, it, the whole thing is just scary. And I don't think it, it needs to be like, I think we need to be assured and, and we need to be come alongside of, and we need to be told that it's not our fault. Um, and you know, the big one, we don't have to be ashamed that, you know, that is, that's our child. And we didn't do anything to deserve that or, or to not. And, and we certainly didn't, um, you know, do the trauma in, in the first place. You know, we're just trying to pick up the pieces. And I think it was a little, you know, nerve wracking uh, uh, to come on here um, just because and be so open and, and vulnerable about it because it it's embarrassing. It, you know, it, it can be. And um, anyways, um, that's kind of where we're at in a nutshell. I pr pray to God the future, you know, goes smoothly and my son keeps improving. Um, but we really don't know, um, you know, how, how that ends up and what will happen. I just focus on one day at a time, um, helping my other children heal, um, going to therapy so that I can be the best version of me uh, should my son come home. Should I need to facilitate this, um, all the kids together again. Um, so yeah, if you are out there and you are living the same life, yeah, please know that you're not alone. Um, there are others out there and we feel you and we just don't, you know, always like to talk about it. So it's kind of a hidden thing that I, it needs to not be hidden. Um, so Thank you for listening. I'm Katie Rose. I'm the founder and president of Attached Families Inc. I am a mother of two beautiful boys that I adopted from foster care who, due to their own demons, issues. They spent 10 years um, being violent in some way. Most people talk about domestic violence and they don't include the fact that there is child to parent violence. And it happens every day in America to thousands and thousands of families who are ashamed or blamed or isolating themselves because they don't know what else to do. Most families who reach out for help and ask for help are somehow hurt in that process. They become blamed or threatened that they'll lose their other children simply for speaking out and looking for help. It is my hope that while connecting and partnering and collaborating with these amazing other organizations that we can bring awareness to society that this is happening and something needs to change. It is no longer okay to say that the systems are broken and go on with our day. We must do something to fix it.